Hello, my name is Jonathan Griffiths. I'm a GP in Cheshire. And I'm also Associate Medical Director for Primary Care for NHS Cheshire and Merseyside. I'm on the Mersey Faculty Board and I am the Mersey Faculty Rep on Council. OK, so, so my leadership journey, I think, really started when I was relatively new and young um, GP partner. So I'm aware, of course, that things are a bit different now than they were then. So then there was no real salaried option. You either locumed or you were, became a partner straight away after training. So I became a partner um, and it wasn't long before I you know, wanted to be a trainer and did the training trainers course. Uh, and then also got involved in what I think was probably the PCT, early days of the PCT. Um, and just by volunteering to be our practices of rep locally, talking about uh, leadership things and, and commissioning locally, and did a bit of work for the PCT around mental health and, and IT um, before I actually moved practice. So I was in Wolverhampton area, West Midlands, Midlands at the time, and then moved to, to Cheshire um, in 2005. Uh, and then when I moved to Cheshire, got fairly quickly involved in sort of town health planning, again, talking about mental health. And from there, uh, we then entered into the kind of pre-CCG time. And I was initially our rep from the practice um, meeting around that practice-based commissioning. Um, and then when the CCGs actually formed and they required a chair, I, I stood and became chair of the CCG. So I was chair of Vale Royal CCG in Cheshire, which was a small CCG, just over 100,000 population. Uh, and I guess really my proper leadership journey, I would say, sort of started around then. And at the time, I remember looking for leadership courses and leadership training, and there wasn't really anything there at all, which is very different to now because we've had a decade since of general practice clinical leadership that wasn't really a thing um, prior to, I don't perceive. So I was looking for things and there weren't really things there, but pushed for some of that training. And we, I did the NHS Top Leaders uh, programme, uh, which was excellent and it kind of introduced me to sort of wider thinking around what leadership was from a clinical perspective and put me in touch with a kind of a, a focus group that we continue to meet as beyond the end of that, that programme. Uh, I guess through that chair period i also started using social media so i started with twitter predominantly and then started a, a blog uh, and it was really interesting how that gives you a different platform and a different profile um, and a national profile and um, sometimes so just through tweeting and then blogging and then tweeting about my blogs of course uh, other people around the country got to know who i was uh, and actually this did lead to a, a kind of a, a, a job. So I got um, communicated with from the team working with Helen Bevan around NHS Change Day uh, and ended up for a, a probably a year or so doing a session a week with Helen Bevan's team uh, looking at innovation and transformation, which was again really helpful for me to understand sort of wider context of leadership in health and, and care. And um, I've moved on and so since then the, the CCGs are obviously no more and our, our CCGs in Cheshire merged from four CCGs to one just before the pandemic and at that point I was no longer CCG chair but worked with our um, health and care partnership our STP so I was GP advisor there and then I've now secured a role with the ICB in Cheshire and Merseyside and I'm associate medical director for primary care. So still in a leadership role now with the uh, enviable uh, role of looking at primary care across Cheshire and, and Merseyside uh, and, and thoroughly enjoying that. And for me, it gives a great balance um, between clinical work, which I still do two days a week and then two and a half days a week as a clinical leader in our system. And I, I know lots of people are looking for balance in their careers. And I found that for me, leadership has done that. So it's given me time uh, out of clinical practice, um, uh, which I still enjoy. And some people will say, well, you only enjoy it, Jonathan, because you're doing it for two days a week. And, and maybe that's the case, uh, that it allows me to do that uh, and then also do something else alongside. I think for people who are looking for that balance and, and different sort of structure to their career, it is worth thinking about the options that are available to you. So some people want to remain 
entirely clinical and so we'll look for GP with a special interest roles and be doing general practice clinically and then doing other sessions in the week around the specifics more specialist area but I would encourage people to, to think about well could they play a leadership role and I think GPs are great for this because we are generalists and so I've always said you can put a GP into any clinical leadership role and they can do it and in fact you can move clinical leaders around so somebody that might have a clinical leadership role in cardiovascular disease I, I reckon you can pick them up and put them into a clinical lead role for mental health and they can do that just as well because as a GP you cover all of these clinical areas so we have great transferable skills uh, and we should recognize that and, and, and acknowledge it. For people that are thinking about well what, what should I do if I want to uh, consider a leadership role or doing something different uh, it, it can be tricky and I appreciate it's trickier perhaps for those people who are salaried um, than they are partners but even then I think you just need to first of all make that internal decision about what it is that you want to, to do and then start looking so you know put yourself out there and look to see what opportunities there are and talk to people about what this might mean for you so talk to trusted individuals colleagues friends talk to your appraiser um, and get some advice from them as well because they may be able to signpost you to some relevant leadership courses that certainly happened to me when I first moved to Cheshire I was signposted to uh, a leadership course by my appraiser um, which was a really significant thing for me at the time so talk to people see if you can get some coaching there's lots of coaching opportunities out there and I really encourage you to get a coach and, and talk things through what your personal aspirations might be and then start looking at what opportunities there might be so some of that is literally looking out for jobs uh, and you can look out for jobs in all the usual places that you look out for jobs but also start sort of saying to people I'm interested in this you know what opportunities are available as I said before put yourself uh, out there and, and ask and there are a few key places that you might want to go looking um, to see what opportunities there are so the college is a great place to meet like-minded individuals um, go along to your faculty if you're not a board member ask if you can go as an observer almost certainly you would be welcomed uh, see if they've got any places on their faculty board you know that's just you know meeting four times a year in the evening most people can do that um, and there are leadership roles within your faculty so there's somebody who's a chair and a vice chair and a, tr and, a, and a treasurer and so on so there are roles there that you can take up uh, and it's a great place to dip your toe in the water I would suggest also your local medical committee in BMA so to so the LMC locally just ask them can I come along to a meeting as an observer see what spaces they've got you may be uh, surprised but often LMCs like faculty boards for the for the college have got places um, available they're not filled so if you kind of step up put your hand up um, you, you may well find that you, there's a place there for you um, and that they're really good places to start and just to start to understand what's going on beyond your practice and start to see what's happening in your local area and the whole system um, so I'd encourage you to to do that um, ICB PCN so that's another place that you can start so you can just see well what's happening in our PCN do they need a clinical lead for any particular topic it might only be a specific piece of work you know a task and finish group somebody to look at and develop um, a protocol for for the PCN but actually if you sort of take a step back to practice that's probably the best place to start and so what does your practice need and so as a partner that I think that is is often very clear as a salary it can be less clear but asking your partners what you know is there something that I could be doing to help the practice can I do this audit can I um, go away and research this and then present my findings to the practice in an educational way it's unlikely that your practice will say no um, it goes down really well it gives you a taste of developing these kind of skills also looks really good uh, when you go for your appraisal doesn't it so you can put it in your PDP you can develop it you can deliver it and it looks great and it gives you your first step on the ladder of providing some leadership so think local and then start thinking out as to what other opportunities there might be uh, there as an example of putting yourself out by the way just one of the things that I did um, was I did a TEDx talk a, a few years ago in 2016 and that came about 
just by chance really that a friend of mine, a non-medical friend of mine said, uh, we're doing a TEDx in, in our town. I live in Nantwich in Cheshire. I thought you might be interested in delivering a, a talk. And I remember saying yes before I even decided what I would speak about. Um, and it's that kind of thing. Just take the opportunity, say yes, and then figure out afterwards what you're going to say and do. And that TEDx talk um, was was great for me. I, I spoke about the about choosing to be a jack of all trades, about generalism, um, and that talk is still watched. Um, I think we're over thirty thousand views now, and has really helped me to kind of position myself on social media in particular uh, and get that profile. Um, out there about who I am. There are also various courses that you can think about um, looking for. So Next Generation GP, so that's aimed at um, new to practice and registrars. Uh, so there, there's often a Next Generation GP programme somewhere near you. It's worthwhile finding out and getting on that programme and that will start to give you some leadership skills as well. So I'd recommend that. For those of us who are, um, I say us for, for mid-career, I think I'm unfortunately probably more late career, but for, for mid-career GPs, uh, then there's the Phoenix programme. And again, just have a look out and see if there's a programme near you that can help you to just think about some of the issues relating to general practice um, in, in your area. There are some um, areas as well with the RCGP. So I know the Northern faculties have run, I think it was called the Shaping the Future programme which was a kind of a leadership development programme as well. So I remember being part of that and uh, and speaking on, on that uh, programme. So just look out and see what might be out there that you could jump onto, because often these opportunities are free, albeit you have to put in the time, of course, to, to do it. I, I have thoroughly enjoyed taking on a, a leadership role. As I say, it's given me that perfect balance between clinical and something else. Um, I think people in my surgery kind of forget that I, I spend probably more time and hours doing this than I do clinically. Um, but it does mean that those two days in, in surgery, which are full on, we all know how busy it is in, in general practice. I only are doing those two days and it gives me ability to step away from that um, for, the, for the rest of the week. Um, and, you know, a change is as good as a break, as they oft, often say. I'm always happy to talk to people. So if you want to get in touch and uh, have a chat about what I've done and, and how I've kind of navigated my career as a, as a leader, I'm always happy to talk about that. Thank you.